Hi, I'm Gary Gilmore from Pennsylvania. And for the past six years, I've been working on a charcoal gasifier that's based upon the design uh, created by Kale, 1940s, from Sweden during the depths of World War II when there was no oil over there. He developed a charcoal gasifier, and I've modified it and made some additions, and I kind of unabashedly call it the Gilmore gasifier. I think it's a fairly simple design to build, very easy to operate, and i am gotten it to the point where I think it's ready to show people that may want to try to copy it or use it. So, let me uh, go into it. This is the reactor. All it is is just a, a grease drum, uh, nothing fancy. It has four clips on it. But the critical part of this gasifier is this unit. This is the air inlet. It's just a tube that brings oxygen into the reactor zone. Uh, it's surrounded by a ceramic nozzle because it gets extremely hot down in there. The gases that are generated come up through this screen and through this uh, pipe and then out through this uh, other pipe and the wood gases, which are mostly carbon monoxide, exit through here. So this just fits down inside the barrel. There's a gasket in the rim, and then these latches just hold the barrel so we have an airtight seal here. And yes, these are homemade latches, uh, just a spring and a overcam lever. It's important that no oxygen be sucked in through the seal, otherwise you may end up with an explosive situation in the container. So the reactor sits right here. Now, the fuel I use is charcoal. The charcoal it's homemade. I run it through a processor so that the larger pieces are no more than three quarter inches in diameter and the smallest pieces are no more than one eighth inch diameter. In fact, uh, this is the size screen that I use to make sure I don't get a lot of fines into my reactor. These are just loaded into the One of the problems with charcoal, of course, as you can see, is the dust. It tends to be rather dirty. And if charcoal is transported, it tends to break up into smaller pieces. So I've also worked on several other options. One is to use a container with a lid on. And as I put the charcoal down in the hole, the dust that's created just goes up into the barrel, in this case. It tends to be cleaner. Uh, the charcoal, it's preferable to use hard wood charcoal. I mean, soft wood will work, but it doesn't have the energy density that hard wood does. So we have to fill this barrel all the way up to the top. This is another device I built. It's just a dog food bag with a uh, nozzle on the end. Once again, as the charcoal goes into the into the reactor, the dust goes up into the bag.
seal. And that's all there is to the charcoal reactor. Now, the wood gas coming out of here has to be cooled and cleaned. And that's where this unit comes in. It's another barrel, the same size, nothing fancy. Um, And they are joined together. My latch got hooked up there. Just have to slow down. That collar fits together and that ties the, jet, the reactor to the cooler filter unit. Now, the filter unit, um, the gas comes in in a tangent and it swirls around and it has to go to the bottom of this reactor where the dust settles. But inside this filter, this cooler unit is the filter. In this case, just a 12 inch stove pipe. Um, I have tabs cut in the bottom. This is where the wood gas comes through and the piece I just dropped. Slides down. down inside there and all that does is hold the filter medium up off the base of the cooler unit. These tabs on the side help center it inside the unit and I also have tabs inside which allow me to lower it into cooler. Around the top of the cooler I have a foam rubber seal. And this is important because it keeps the raw wood gas coming from the uh, reactor from getting into, it forces it to go down to the bottom of the cooling unit and up through the filter meat. And that just kind of fits right in there like that. Now my filter medium, charcoal. It's the same charcoal I use in my reactor. And I fill the, the, uh, the filter up probably about halfway with this charcoal. Now what's nice about charcoal, a charcoal as a filter medium is it has a lot of porosity to it, a lot of surface area, and it tends to grab onto and hold any tars and water that would come through the wood gasifier. Now, on top of this charcoal, this is just a piece of, I don't know, it's cotton, but I'm putting it in there just trying to keep some of the dust from getting sucked into the final filter. Now the final filter is this piece. This happens to just be a Freon can uh, with a hole drilled into it. The lid has a two inch bung on it that screws into it and these bolts hold the Freon can on. The final filter consists of foam rubber in this case, uh, this is open cell foam rubber. 
I just kind of squeeze it and just push it right down in. And this is to trap any other dust that may come up through it. This is then inverted, placed inside. Now I want to make sure I get lined up. The gas, the wood gas coming from the uh, reactor into the cooler filter then goes through this quick connect coupling. And once again, I use these uh, little latches to make sure I have an airtight seal for the filter also, because if you don't, you may get oxygen in there and that can lead to an explosive situation. Reactor, the cooler, the filter unit. This is the blower. When I turn this on, it will create a suction which will bring oxygen into this tube. It'll burn in the charcoal and create wood gas. So now I'm just going to hook up my electric, electrical 